Hi, it's Dwyer. It is March the 7th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there was a big heavyweight fight this last weekend that you, the gambler, needed to look hard at. We know at heavyweight right now, the guys who hold the belts are predominantly right-handed. You do have switches, guys who can go southpaw and can stay southpaw. But you understand in real life they're really right-handed guys. Right? Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. I believe there's a question out there, and it's a big question. Whether a slick southpaw with a great jab, like Luis Ortiz, if he gets rolling and if he fights the right fight, not the fight he fought against Deontay Wilder, a fight I still maintain he should have won, right? He lost. Obviously, knockouts matter in boxing. Wilder clearly won that match. But Ortiz wasn't at his best that day. There's an open question on whether if Ortiz gets going, whether Anthony Joshua would know what to do with a southpaw who can dictate distance with a superior jab. Right? I believe there's a question on whether Wilder beats him in a rematch. Let's be clear here. I know the official version had that fight being competitive until the knockdowns. I'm just telling you these two eyes didn't see Wilder win a round in that fight until the knockdowns. Wilder was getting spanked. Understand, fighting Wilder in New York is kind of like fighting Canelo in Las Vegas. Right? You show up and the judges seem to already have six rounds against you on the scorecard. Right? Let me say this too. Fury had a relatively easy fight in my eyes. I know this is not the way the public sees it or at least the official boxing columnists, right? But in my eyes, Fury had a relatively easy fight against Deontay Wilder, right? Let's face it. Let's face it. Fury wins at least eight rounds in that fight, right? I'll agree he certainly loses the two rounds where he's on the canvas. I'm not contesting that. But you really have to look hard. You know, get the fight film and really search for other rounds that Deontay Wilder won. Well, could Fury have that comfort level in fighting Luis Ortiz? I don't think so. Right? Ortiz is mobile. When Ortiz is on his game, he can come find you. When Ortiz is on his game, that right jab is popping. You try to duck in on it, you're getting hit with uppercuts. Right? This is a guy who is excellent at going to the body. Right? Forget the Wilder fight. I don't know what happened there. You have Ortiz against a thin guy, and Ortiz decides he's not going to live on Wilder's body, which he could have. Right now we know Fury has great legs. What happens if an opponent is actually able to follow Fury? Is a natural southpaw, so when Fury switches to southpaw, he's at a disadvantage. What happens if an opponent who has a punch doesn't need the punch to win rounds. In other words, this isn't an all-or-nothing Wilder situation. This is a situation where the guy actually has boxing skills. Well, let me just say this. 
you saw those boxing skills against Hammer this last weekend. Folks, that was prime Luis Ortiz. Now first, this has to be mentioned because this is the next wave in boxing. You remember Barry Bonds. You remember Gary Sheffield. You remember the Balco Lab. You remember Victor Conte. You remember THC. You remember the clear. You remember Victor Conte going to jail. Right? Well, before Conte went to jail, he had a regimen called SNAC. S-N-A-C. And people like Marion Jones before she was disgraced. Barry Bonds before he was disgraced. Used to actually be on the Snack website as prime examples of what Snack could do for you. Well, you might have noticed in addition to the Stanford logo, Stanford Cardinal logo on Luis Ortiz's trunks. And I don't know Luis Ortiz personally, but brother, I thank you for that. Shout out right here. Ortiz also had snack on his shorts. He's now part of the protocol. Conti, out of jail, is actually one of the prime nutritional consultants in the sport. Right? If you look at boxing hard enough, you're going to find people with colorful pasts. Not just wearing boxing gloves. Not even in the corner. But consultants who help people get in shape outside of the ring. Right? It's my understanding Victor Conti is working right now with Mikey Garcia, for example. Right? Now, Conti is a guy who knows a lot about nutrition. Right? Just Google ZMA here online and Victor Conte. And you're going to find out that Victor Conte is a guy who's credited with finding out about the benefits of taking certain supplements and how they naturally enhance your testosterone. So Victor Conte is helping apparently, or at least Victor Conte's organization, SNACK is helping Luis Ortiz at around 40 years old stay in shape. Now I know when you mention 40 in other weight classes people say you gotta be kidding me. Right? You knew Floyd Mayweather was on the verge of retirement when he got up around 40 years old. Right? 40 doesn't work well in other divisions. I'm just telling you that Father Time has a bigger fight on his hands when he's going up against heavyweights. I'm just telling you, Luis Ortiz looked to be in magnificent shape against Hammer. Magnificent shape. Right? He wasn't tired. He looked like he was in shape. He was the better athlete from start to finish. The reflexes were there. More importantly, the timing and movement were there. Let's face it. We have some big clunky elite heavyweights right now. Right? I think there's an open question on what happens. If a heavyweight can get on his toes and move around the ring against Anthony Joshua. We already know the answer to the question. With regard to Tyson Fury. Excuse me. With regard to Deontay Wilder. Because that's what Tyson Fury did to him. Clearly if you're going to compete against the best in the division. And I would say that's Tyson Fury. You're going to have to be able to move. Luis Ortiz can move. More importantly... Luis Ortiz can bring his game with him as he moves. So you noticed in this fight, Hammer stationary, Ortiz is moving, and Ortiz is popping a jab. You noticed Ortiz moved well enough, and this is important if you're going to fight Anthony Joshua. Ortiz moved well enough where his back wasn't against the ropes a lot. 
right? He was able to keep it in the middle of the ring. You're fighting a big, clunky heavyweight. It's late in the fight. You're a little tired. You don't want the brother cornering you on the ropes, right? You understand that's not the place to be. Ortiz, very ring savvy, can keep it in the middle of the ring. He has the legs to do it. He has the jab to discourage a big clunky heavyweight from getting inside. So this hammer fight is significant because Ortiz, who has a lot of power, who landed some hard shots a lot of guys would not have taken in this bout. But Ortiz didn't rely on the power. Ortiz just decided to outbox his opponent. So this was a fight where you had to, again, get up on the film and look hard to find rounds to give to Hammer. You understood with a few rounds to go. And I believe the fight was only a 10-round fight. You understood that Hammer needed to drop Ortiz multiple times to have even a remote shot of winning a decision. In other words, this is that rare heavyweight by today's standards. A heavyweight who can box you and can move. Dylan White, skilled boxer. Skilled boxer. But I don't see a lot of movement with Dylan White. I know he's moving in the video, the amateur video, where he drops Anthony Joshua. I'm sure Dylan White has that somewhere in his game. But the Dylan White I see roughing up guys now, right, is willing to hang around the pocket to do so. He's willing to trade shots with you. He's not trying to move against Joseph Parker or Derek Chisora, right? He's willing to trade against those guys. Lucas Brown, he wants to trade, right? Luis Ortiz, Southpaw, immediately. Tough opponent. Right? Unorthodox. Where are you going to get skilled Southpaw heavyweight sparring partners? And the fact that Ortiz can actually get up on the balls of his feet. And the fact that Ortiz, who at times has been out of shape in the past, is now in top condition with top stamina, gives him a real shot at the heavyweight crown. Make no mistake, I would take Tyson Fury over him. But I will say this, I have my price. In other words, if I walk in the casino and I'm ready to make a bet on Tyson Fury and they suddenly tell me that I'm getting 6-1 to one or 7-1 to one on Luis Ortiz, Tyson, I'll see you. I'll drop you off at the bus stop. I'm going to take those odds. Right? If you're getting Luis Ortiz at long odds, and you might, because casual bettors are going to hear 40 years old, that's usually not good news when you're betting boxing, right? 40 years old, then they're going to hear knocked out, right? By Wilder, you know, knocked down several times, right? They're going to say to themselves, oh, gee, this guy's already been beaten by an elite heavyweight who still wears a crown. Right, and he's 40 years old, they're going to reach the conclusion that he's not a serious threat for the heavyweight title. Don't be silly. This guy's one of the best heavyweights out there. As I suspect, Vladimir Klitschko, who rumor has it is coming back, and he's in his 40s. Right, I believe Vladimir's 43. I suspect Vladimir Klitschko is one of the best heavyweights out there. Why? Because some of the guys wearing the crown right now either have obvious holes in their game, right? Deontay Wilder. I think he lost a Fury fight by a few rounds. Right? Anthony Joshua. Don't be fooled by the scorecards. Again, I don't know who these judges are judging heavyweight fights these days. Alexander Povetkin is clearly beating him. Clearly beating him. 
before he makes adjustments. In one of his best moments, he shortens his punches. Right? Had Povetkin, after a fast start, and I know the judges had it differently, right? Let's face it. Joshua in the UK, again, it's like fighting Canelo in Vegas. Right? He's going to win all the close rounds. At least on the judges' scorecards. Right? Had Povetkin, and it's a stylistic thing, and by the way, that Povetkin Usyk fights a whopper. Had Povetkin, after a fast start where he established that he had the better legs than Joshua, right? Just look at the film. He's moving much better than Joshua. Had Povetkin, after establishing that he could just get outside on demand on Joshua, in other words, he's inside on Joshua, Joshua starts throwing punches, Povetkin had the legs to say, you know what, let me just... Let me just back away here. Another older fighter, better athlete than Joshua. Let's be real. Had Povetkin, after a fast start, decided, I'm going to confuse this young guy. Rather than continuing to fight an ambush style, where I'm outside, then I jump inside, I throw a few punches, then I'm back outside. Rather than ambush every round, where even a guy who's not a Mensa candidate after a few rounds, is going to say to himself, you know what, he might do an ambush style again this round. Rather than do that, Povetkin should have thought to himself, okay, I've established I have the better legs here. Let me switch to plan B or plan C for a couple of rounds. Just to confuse this guy, just to have an element of surprise. So when I go back to that ambush style, this guy's unprepared for the ambush. Right, Povetkin should have switched to a back foot game and, you know, some, some other style. You know, hid behind a jab for a couple of rounds and stuff like that. But make no mistake, Povetkin had better legs than Joshua. The Luis Ortiz, who fights Hammer, has better legs than Joshua. So to sum up, Right? I want you to look at Ortiz's jab in the hammer fight. Folks, it's popping. I want you to look at how Ortiz keeps the fight in the middle of the ring. In other words, as you watch round after round, just count the times Ortiz has his back up against the ropes. There are a few times he gets caught with his back up against the ropes. Quickly pivots. Gets back to the middle of the ring. Look at how Ortiz in combinations is the opposite of a one-two guy. It's not jab, jab, right hand. No, 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 no. This guy is jab, jab, uppercut, dip a shoulder, right? You know, fake a right, throw the left hand, his dominant hand. You know, this guy, Al Bernstein, called Ortiz's offense creative. Understand that creativity gives him a decided advantage against young guys who are more of the one-two variety. Right? So, Joshua, in my opinion, shouldn't be fighting the guy he's fighting next. <laughs> right? He should be fighting either one of the other heavyweight champs, Usyk, Dylan White, who certainly has earned it. Luis Ortiz, who, in my opinion, outside of Tyson Fury, who clearly beat Wilder, Luis Ortiz gave Wilder his biggest challenge. Right? Ortiz, at 40, remains a threat to the heavyweight crown. The Ortiz who showed up this last weekend would have beaten Wilder, in my opinion. I took Ortiz the first time they fought. I'm poor today, <laughs> right, because of that. The next time a Wilder-Ortiz fight is announced, I'm going to be on the Ortiz side of the ledger again. And because Ortiz lost the first fight, he got stopped. Wilder's best moment as a pro, in my opinion. 
because Ortiz lost that first fight, I'm expecting some nice odds on the rematch. Casino, I'll take my chances. Ortiz, Southpaw, taking nutrition seriously, excellent stamina, excellent legs, excellent timing. Right? He can be outside and pop a jab, and the jab's accurate. Then when he gets inside, folks, the punches are landing. He's not inside throwing wide punches and stuff like that. I'll agree. Hammer isn't defensively blessed. But he's tough. He's fought some people. Folks, there are parts of this fight where he's getting battered. And unlike Wilder, right? Ortiz can win the slow rounds. It's not all or nothing. He doesn't need to knock you down to get ahead of you on the scorecards. Great performance by Luis Ortiz this last weekend. These are the fights that matter. These are the fights that tell you whether a guy is viable for the crown. Luis Ortiz at 40 remains viable. I think for gamblers, he's worth a hard look. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.